Hello everyone and welcome back to Solar System Tourism in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 with Realism Overhaul. At the beginning of this play session, I was putting together a Lynx spacecraft here, uh, which is one of my modeled spacecraft. It's sort of like a lightweight Orion. But then this happened with uh, procedural fairing. It started to go infinite on me. I don't know how that happened, uh, but it is literally stretching further and further out to infinity and using up all my RAM at the same time. So th this was an interesting phenomenon and caused me to have to restart the game because it was about to crash my computer. So <laughs> that was that was worth uh, noting. But anyway, we are configuring this Lynx spacecraft to deliver a tourist to Skylab 2, which is our, one of our Earth orbit stations, and then also bring those two little tugs that we've got at the bottom of the service module over to mirror around the moon in order to move the docking module that we had placed in the previous video, but we weren't able to move to its correct location. So we've got a combination of things to do. First, we have to rendezvous with an Earth orbit station and then rendezvous with a lunar orbit station. So it's Nico as the tourist who wants to visit Skylab and paid struts for it. And we are launching with a Kasei rocket, which is a rocket with five uh, Hydrolox engines, basically better RS-68s, uh, slightly better thrust weight ratio and able to be clustered safely. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, they're not really RS-68s, I call them the ED-6 engines. And there is a vacuum variant, which is what is on the second stage of this rocket. And fortunately, it has a really, really big nozzle, which you can see sort of clipping into the inner stage there. And that's a bad sign because the inner stage does in fact collide with the ED6V vacuum engine. And so we are not able to do the mission. We do have to recover our Kerbals though, who are currently in dire peril. And that's a little bit hard because we got a little bit stuck on that inner stage there too, because we've got the tugs and solar panels and everything. I used the launch escape system to get us free and then parachute. I wanted to recover the tugs and the service module too. And I thought we had enough parachutes which we did, I believe. And so that all splashed down together at 7.1 meters per second. And we would have to try again. A little bit of an odd, f yeah, there's all sorts of odd stuff going on here. Uh, but uh, yep, let's recover. This is not the normal service module for the Lynx because I wanted to put those tugs on. I made a custom service module and also a custom stage underneath it instead of what would normally go there would be like a Sajita upper stage. Anyway, uh, here we are relaunching the Kasei rocket. Normally the Kasei rocket has four Sajita boosters, which are boosters with uh, methane oxygen engines. But uh, we did not include those because they were not necessary in this case. So separation and ignition. This time a clean separation thanks to separatrons and the ignition of the ED-6V engine with its ginormous nozzle. And that stage was done successfully and we used the upper stage here to finish orbit. And this is an ED-4V with an extendable nozzle there. And this is a methane oxygen engine at 1000 kilonewtons. So basically you could think of it as uh, as a methane oxygen Merlin kind of thing. It's got a shader problem right now though. And these are just little vernier thrusters because lighting the ED4V, the big engine, is not so good for Earth rendezvous. We don't need it to be lit for an Earth rendezvous. It'll be reserved for transferring over to the moon. So I'm just using these little vernier thrusters for now. And rendezvousing with the station there. And that is our Skylab 2 where we will deposit its Nico for the time being. And after that transfer, we just undock and we need to get over to the moon to do the other business. That turns out not to be so easy, as we will soon find out. The transfer is plotted, but we have to worry about potentially hitting the Skylab again, because it's right there. So I only light the vernier engines and so to wait to see if we pass properly before lighting the main engine. 
And so that's what's happening here. One thing I did not know at this point was that we are going to have a boil off issue and that's going to cause problems. So here I figured out that we are not in fact going to crash into Skylab on our way to the moon. So main engine is lit. And so that part's done. And that's the end of that burn with uh, some to spare. But of course we still have to rendezvous with Mir which is in an odd location around the moon and so here I'm sort of adjusting for that. And then, yeah, you can see our height, 266,000 kilometers above the Earth. So we've already covered um, about one and a half days of trip, but we had severe boil off. So I'm using the stage down there with the ED4V to top off the service module because that also is methane oxygen. Probably would have been better if I had gone with a hypergolic option. And then just to cause me more trouble, we had this weird spin. Again, I think it's because of the tugs and the claw interacting with the procedural fairings there. So I time warp through to try and separate them. But of course we have to use a little bit more fuel to stop this rotation. That's not easy. I'm rebalancing the fuels because the boil off between the two was not equal. I had to dump some. And here we go, making orbit around the moon now. Very eerie. This is the ED-1 engine. My ED series of engines. That ED-1 engine is a 30 kilonewton methane oxygen engine. Pressure fed. Unfortunately, we don't have enough Delta V to do this rendezvous. As you can clearly see, the Delta V reading down there and the plot requiring like a thousand something. So I decided to let one of the tugs go on its own. Now I had no idea what kind of Delta V the tug has, you can see. I mean, it's just RCS. And so we have to do this colossal RCS burn with this little tug. But it so happens to have worked. It did in fact have enough. It is just like little MMH NTO fuel tanks with a claw on top. <laughs> so. It was designed to move around station modules much larger than itself, so as far as it getting around without any station module, it can apparently cover quite a lot of Delta V. So, here we are, approaching the station. We need to move the docking module so that uh, we, we actually need to claw the side that's currently docked, so... That is why we're using the bridge stage to move it out. And now the claw is gonna grab it. But can we do this with just one tug? Normally the tugs work in pairs for balance. The docking module isn't that heavy though compared to say a full station module so it's potentially doable but we have to be careful. So we get rid of the bridge stage, control from there and now we have to dock it in its proper location. This is the second to last module for Mir. The, the last module is Peroda. And here we go, docking it to its correct place. And this is where the shuttle would dock to it. This is basically meant as a shuttle adapter. We will use it for other things though. Because it extends out, anything large would probably dock to it. And we're disposing of Briz there. Alright, so speaking of Peroda, that is what we are launching here. With uh, yet another 4 booster Vulcan slash Energia with upper stage set up here. Building Mir around the moon has involved a lot of launches of this particular launch vehicle, but you might want to enjoy it now because uh, we are going to be shifting to other launch vehicles and I actually don't know if during the live streams that uh, come further on. Whether we've used this again? We might have, but I don't remember. It was sort of ideal for launching these Soviet Mir modules over to the moon, but we will be launching other things going forward. So here we go, the RD-57 and the Vesuvius stage. 
And I skipped over the fairing separation, and we're making the transfer here now. Using the RD57 to turn there. Somebody in the comments complained that we were focused solely on, like, Earth and Moon stuff, and we weren't really doing much with the rest of the solar system, so I call it solar system tourism. But you have to remember that we have transfer windows. And so it's easier to get to the moon and launch a whole bunch of stuff to the moon and lower orbit and such in terms of transfer windows than launching stuff to Mars, Jupiter, Uranus, whatever. And also my audience, who are the tourists, have to be able to pay struts, uh, the in-stream currency, to get to locations. And also getting to those locations takes a long time. So once a uh, high roller, somebody who's watched the stream for a long time decides to go to Uranus, well, they're stuck on that trip for years. You know, they can't uh, commission another trip. Whereas somebody who decides to go to an Earth orbit station or the moon, well, they can pay for another trip right away. So it's a lot more flexible. So there's sort of an issue there, if you will a built-in thing where we are going to end up having a whole lot of missions to the places that we can get to more frequently. During the transfer windows I send as much as I can to the other places, but again it takes them a while to get there and until they get there I don't know what to send next. Whereas as we're building Mir, you know, one module is successful, we build it, another module is successful, we add more to it, we can easily construct it. But if we have to wait for, you know, one module to arrive at Mars before sending something else, then that's going to take some time. Okay, so here is Perota docking. So we do send missions out to all sorts of places. Uh, Saturn and Uranus will happen, Mercury happens. Mercury is the most painful, actually, but in, that's actually convenient in terms of the tourists being able to get there quickly and coming back relatively quickly though that's gonna be an interesting ordeal that we'll get to spoilers but anyway so we've docked Perota to the station the problem is we've got a wayward lynx with a Kerbal on board that we're going to have to sort of rescue but that Kerbal has plenty of food water and oxygen for the time being so I didn't rush it and that will be saved for the next session but here is a completed mirror for you so with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.